Hiya, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. Thank you if you are a returning subscriber and if you're not yet already subscribed then make sure you click on the little red subscribe button down below as that would mean so much to me if you could do that. For today's video I thought I would share with you five things that I wish I'd known before starting my YouTube channel. Now more than ever, I think it's a great time to start a channel. If you've ever thought about it, then I definitely say just to go for it. You never know what you'll enjoy about it or if you will or won't enjoy the experience until you try it. So I definitely say go for it if you have ever thought about it, especially right now, now that we're sort of inside more than ever and you've probably got a bit of extra time on your hands to get to grips with editing, having fun with it as well. I thought, It'd be a good time as well, therefore, to share some things that are great to know before you do do that and things that will hopefully help you to not make some of the mistakes that I have done or just make use of all the resources out there that you have. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. I hope you enjoy it and let's get into the first thing. Number one is music. Obviously on YouTube, you can't use major songs that are out there like in the charts or by any kind of major artist as they are all copyrighted. The last thing you want is to get a copyright strike because because once you get so many strikes built up, it can block you from your channel and all sorts can happen. Not that that's ever happened to me personally, but I did know that you couldn't use copyrighted music. So then when I found that out, I was like, where are people getting their music from? What are people using? So I was using the YouTube audio library, which is a fair enough. It's a good place to kind of start. They've got quite a large collection of songs on there and music. However, it's not always the best music on there. I've got some tracks off of there and they're fairly decent, but it's definitely better to look around on YouTube itself. There's so many channels which offer royalty free music or different artists as well that will offer royalty free music. And if you just type that into the YouTube search, you'll get all kinds of songs that come up. People have also made playlists, putting together loads of different songs by different artists that are royalty free as well and that basically means you can use it as your background music and you don't need sort of the copyrights for it. Do just check the description of the song mode because some of them will have you're free to use this music and monetize your video just check all the criteria however they might have but include this in your video description and then there may just be some links you have to copy across with the song title and some details about the artist so just make sure you check out for that if you do use a royalty free song as well. I usually link all my music that I use down below anyway whether it has that or not just because I think it's fair to the artist and also I love it when other people do that because if I like a song in a video and I want to use it then it really helps when the links are down in the description so I can go and find it. Definitely don't think that your music is limited to the audio library that you just find in the YouTube studio. The next thing is don't aim for perfection. I'm definitely sort of a bit of a perfectionist in my personality and just who I am. I always have been with schoolwork, whatever it is. I like to get it right and if I know I can do something better, I will try. And I'm not saying with this that don't make your videos and the content that you put out the best that it can be, but you don't have to be an over sort of perfectionist with it. I find that watching videos which are a bit more raw and real and just everyday lives and people just being themselves is a lot better to watch than some really over edited video where people just chop out massive chunks that actually show more of who they are as a person as well. If you think about some of the videos that you watch, I'm sure you go back to the same people more because they're being real, they're being raw, and they're showing their true self and their true personality as opposed to this real edited version. I won't say that I've ever sort of overly edited myself at all to make me look a certain way or sound a certain way or act a certain way, but I definitely would spend time just sort of picking up on the tiny details that are really insignificant and really don't matter. So don't overstress yourself or overwork and strive for absolute perfection. And I mean, what really is perfection anyway? What's perfect for you won't be for someone else anyway. So just have more fun with it and get creative with editing and don't overstress for ensuring that every little detail is absolutely perfect. Number three is that it is definitely a learning process. You can't just expect instant success and you can't just expect yourself to know exactly how everything works and how to edit perfectly or how to edit in the ways you want to, how to film everything like that. You won't just pick up instantly. You might do if you have good sort of background skills in editing and photography or filming already, but if you're completely new to it, don't worry if your first few videos, or even for like a good chunk of the time, aren't the best quality, aren't the best edited. That is all just part of the learning process. Even now, I still, even now I still go back to learning new tips of how to edit, and just picking up on new little things that I can do in my videos, and just trying to make them better and change up my editing as well, and learning new skills and things to apply to my videos, because 
There's so many features as well that come along with updates in video software and new things that you might not have even thought about doing before. They may pick up on someone else doing something and you think, oh, I want to learn how to do that. How can I do that in my videos? So you're constantly learning. You're never going to reach a point where you know absolutely everything, even years down the line. I've been doing this stuff for, I think, about five years and I'm still learning a whole lot. So don't just expect it all to come to you and don't stress when you don't think your video looks amazing or or that it's not as well edited as someone else's if you're new to this then you're not gonna get it straight away so just remember that it is a learning process and over time you'll pick up on more skills number four as well is something that I've been trying to apply more recently and that is to do with your thumbnail and title it can really make all the difference to a video whether it flops or whether it's successful there's no point having a good video offering good quality content to people and trying to help people or share your day-to-day -day life or whatever it is that your video is about and not have people click on it this has been something that I've definitely picked up on a lot more recently and tried to put more thought into and spend more time making my thumbnails and spend more time actually thinking of titles and what I would actually search for. That's always a good take to think about when you're thinking of your titles is if I was looking for a video about this, what would I be typing into the YouTube search? What are some of the most popular videos around that topic titled and how do they sort of structure their title in order to attract views? And also think about what videos are you more likely to click on when you see them pop up in your subscriptions box. You don't want your thumbnails just be completely bland and not have that little pop of colour and just completely wash out and spread into the background. You want them to stand out, you want people to click on your video, you want your title and your thumbnail to look attractive and pull people in. And my fifth and final thing is just to have fun with it, get creative, don't overstress. I've definitely fallen into the trap before, particularly when I'm sort of busy with uni work, for example, and it's like, oh no, I've got a day coming up when I normally upload a video. I need to get something out there, what can I do? And then you just kind of rush it, you put something out there just for the sake of it. And it's not really offering much value to someone or it's not your best content. And even you yourself, as you're putting it out there, you just know that it's not your greatest content. So definitely just make the videos you want to make, make the videos you actually enjoy making and not just doing it for the sake of it. Because I think people would much rather see something that you've put time and effort into and that you're actually wanting to film rather than something that you've just made because you felt like you've had to. And also that portrays across on camera. When you're feeling stressed or you're not particularly wanting to film it, no matter how hard you push it, you can still sense that something's not quite right and that person doesn't particularly want to be doing that video or they don't particularly want to be there. So definitely remember why you started. That's another good reason. Have a good strong why behind your channel. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to entertain people? Are you trying to get good information across there? Are you trying to make people laugh? Just have a good why. What is the main purpose behind your channel? And at times when you're stressing over content, not sure what to do, remind yourself of that why. Then you can think of what can I fit in with that why that will serve that why and give the content that I'm wanting to get across on my channel. And that can really help make such a difference so definitely just remember to keep it light keep it fun keep it real keep it raw that was a lot of words there but you know just just enjoy it and have fun with it at the end of the day those were my five things that i'd have wanted to know when starting youtube or things that i would have wanted to pay attention to hopefully you have found this useful whether you're new to youtube or about to start a channel or been thinking of starting a channel let me know if you have as well i always love discovering other smaller youtubers out there too so if you have got content that's newly released or just want to branch out with other small youtubers then get the comment section going let's have a little chat amongst all ourselves leave your channel links down below and we can all go over head over to the channels that you like the look of and go and support each other just now thinking of while i was doing that last tip of content sort of focused around not stressing and creating content let me know if you would like to see either a video on here or on an igtv video talking about coming up with content that will fit in with your channel and how to come up with content as well so i started to go down that line with the whole like why thing but yeah let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing as well if you have found this video useful or enjoyed it then smash a big thumbs up on it and click on that little red subscribe button down below if you're new to my channel and don't forget there's also that notifications bell too that you can tap on so you're notified whenever i upload and i'll be sure to see you very soon with a brand new video bye